boys and girls. It's Miss Lisa, your art teacher. Hi, welcome back to my table of art. I've missed you all. I hope you're doing well. It's a really cold and rainy day today for those of you that are having art today. So I have my nice warm grandpa sweater on. Keeps me nice and cozy, toasty. Well, listen, I'm sending you a little video today because I want you to learn about this wonderful Japanese artist. Her name is Yayoi Kusama. She loves polka dots and she loves pumpkins. She uses pumpkins a lot in her art because it's a very good memory she has of her childhood. And she uses dots because long, long time ago when she was about 10 years old, she had kind of like a hallucination with flowers and dots coming out of the flowers. And she feels like all of us are just one dot in the whole universe. Who knows? She could be right. But enjoy the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. And now we're going to make our own version of Yayoi's pumpkins with the polka dots. So I have up behind me, can you see it up there? Where's my helping hand? Here's my helping hand. This is what I'm going to make today, right above my head. Do you see that? There we go. Right above my head, we have two pumpkins. One is orange and one is purple. And behind it, on the green sheet, there's nothing but polka dots. And on the pumpkins, nothing but polka dots. All inspired by Yayoi Kusumo's pumpkins. And that's what we're going to make today. So, I will be sending everyone one big paper plate and one small paper plate. Now you can choose. We're going to paint purple and we're going to paint orange. If you are at home and you don't have any paint, it's okay. Use a crayon, use a markers, use watercolors, use whatever you have to make one orange and one purple. I made my big one orange and I made my little one purple. You can make it a lighter purple so the dots really stand out or you could keep it dark. Actually, I could see those dots really well, but it's appearing very dark on my monitor. So you choose which color paint you want on which pumpkin. I've done again the orange for the big one and the purple for the little. And I also pre-painted mine so I could start the lesson with you. Okay, look at that looks like blue, but it's purple. See how dark the purple is behind me? This is actually purple. So you're going to need a few things. Let me bring this down, okay? I want to show you. Okay. So you're going to get, again, a big plate and a little plate, which you're going to paint. I'm sending everybody this shredded purple paper. We're going to put that at the bottom of our painting. And you're going to get a nice, beautiful lime green, long 12 by 18 paper. And again, you're going to need to paint either purple or orange or you don't have to paint at all. You can use crayons, markers, or anything else you have, okay? So here I have my pumpkins already painted. So I want to put the blank plates over to the side. So that's the first thing you're going to do. The very first thing you're going to do is paint your pumpkins. If you only have red, yellow, or blue paint at home, then you're lucky because if you mix red and yellow, you'll get orange. Let's do this together. If you have only red, blue, and orange, I'm sorry, red, blue, and yellow at home, no problem. Red and yellow will make orange, okay? Red and yellow make orange. How about purple? Blue and red make purple. Blue and red make purple. 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 Okay? While that's drying, we're going to make some polka dots on our big lime green paper. I don't know how to do lime, but I know green, okay? So come on down. Come on down. Come on. And let's start drawing our circles. 
We're going to make some big ones. So you're going to have to make the shape of a circle and fill it in. Fill it in really good. Okay. Fill it in really good. Take your time. We're not in a rush. Our pumpkins plates have to dry. Big ones all over. Big ones. So our paper plates are drying. You should have made one purple and one orange, and it doesn't matter which one is which. If you made the bigger one purple, that's fine. Just make sure you fill these in, because that's the most important. I'm going to pause while we do this. I see that I've gotten a few more done. And I'm going to continue with my large circles and filling them in. Now if you have a marker, that's perfect. If you have a crayon, that's also perfect. If you have oil pastels, you can use those. This is the type of project that anything will work because the point is that it's polka dots. We just want to make polka dots on our pumpkins. Doesn't matter if we paint them, we color them, we use colored pencils, whatever you have, we can use. I like using the markers for my dots because the marker makes my dots really stand out. Really bold dots. Really bold polka dots. But if I didn't color them all the way in, they might not look as bold. Because sometimes when you miss spots, it takes away from the dramatic appearance of a big bold dot. So I got almost done. I think I'm going to put one more in the corner and I'm going to be done with my big bold dots. Okay, one more right here. What do you think? I think that'll look perfect. I'm going to color that in. And then I'm going to, almost done, all done, almost done. So this is what we're doing while our plates are drying. Okay, so if you didn't have to worry about your plates drying, that's okay too. Look how bold my polka dots came out. I used a marker. Anything will work. If you have a marker, that's perfect. If you have crayons, that's fine too. If you only have oil pastels, use those. If you have watercolor, use that. Um, if you have colored pencils, use them. The point is we're making polka dots. So now I'm starting with big, bold polka dots. And the thing about Kusama, when she does her dots, she starts out with larger ones and then goes gradually to smaller dots. So I'm going to do medium sized dots now in between my big bold dots. Okay? So if you'd like to come on down and watch me, come on down. Alrighty, so I'm getting my marker again. So this is a big dot. So now I think I'll make medium or just this size. Not too big and not too small. I don't want to go too small. I'll be here forever. Just filling in some spots. You know, Kusama did tons and tons of dots in her paintings, and she would work from 9 o'clock in the morning to 5 o'clock at night every single day. And she still does that. She's about 91 years old now. She lives in a special hospital, and across the street from the hospital is her studio. She voluntarily went into the hospital. It helps her. It helps her mind. And then she goes across the street every morning at 9 o'clock, works on her art, and then comes back at the end of the day and goes back to the hospital to rest and ease her mind. Okay, so let's come back up. I'm back. Okay, so now we have large dots and smaller dots, but yet I'm going to make even a smaller dot. And I'm going to take my time because I don't want to have dots with lines coming out because I rushed. I'm going to just make 
dots with my marker, dot, dot, dot. So I'm going to be very careful and I'm going to go very slowly. <laughs> I'll see you down there. Okay, hang on. Okay, so watch how I'm going to make these dots. Just gently press down and lift. Press down and lift. Carefully put the dots down. Carefully. Just fill in the areas where you think it might need some dots. Don't have to put too many down. Don't rush because you don't want to have little tails coming out of your little dots because you went too fast. Okay, so let's come back up and I want to talk to you about the different sizes and what it created. Okay, so the thing about Kusama, she would make these dots and she would imagine that they are going infinite amount of time, infinite amount of distance, an infinite amount of dots. And by making the different sizes, we've created the illusion that these big dots are nice and close to us and those teeny tiny dots are way out in the universe. That's why they're so tiny, they're so far away, that all we see is a tiny speck. Sort of like the stars in the sky. The closer ones we could see, but the ones that are out far in the different galaxies, just a tiny little pinhead. So we've created an illusion of space, and space is an element of art. By creating different size dots, large, close to you, teeny tiny dots way far away, and the medium, they're not too far, but they're not too close, okay? So this is the first step in creating the infinite dots that Yoyoi Kusama is famous for. And let me tell you, she has a room that she created with her polka dots that has mirrors, and having the reflection of dots, millions of dots, into the mirror gives that illusion of infinity. It's an amazing, amazing installation. And if you ever, ever get a chance to see one of her installations or her shows, you really need to go. She's so sweet. All she talks about is spreading joy, love, and peace, and pray for anybody that's suffering. She's a wonderful woman. That's why I really wanted to work on this project, because I just really adore her. Okay, so now, We've got our paper done with our big dots where we're gonna place our pumpkins. And by this point, our pumpkins are dry. So now we wanna create pumpkins out of our paper plates. So how are we gonna do this? Let me put this on the side because I don't wanna get it messed up. And let me bring it down so we can start working on our pumpkins, okay? So now when you draw a pumpkin, we're not going to draw straight lines because a pumpkin is not straight up and down. A pumpkin has a curve to it. So if we have a curved pumpkin, we need the, the natural lines to curve with the pumpkin because as he grows in each section, it grows in a curve coming up, okay? So watch what I'm gonna do with my pencil. I'm gonna start at the bottom point and I'm gonna go with the curve of the paper plate and go to the top. And I'm going to do this next line close by, but not right on top of it. And now I'm going to curve the opposite direction. And a little bit wider of a curve. And the outskirts, I'll have an outline of my marker on the outskirts of the pumpkin. Okay? Can you see the lines that I created? Here's the center point right here. So I'm curving this on, everything on this side is curving outward, and everything on this side is curving to the opposite side. So now that I have these lines in place, I'm gonna take my marker and I'm gonna trace over them. If you're on the table, you might wanna put a piece of paper underneath you like I have to protect the table.
Okay, so I've made lines on my pumpkin and I'm going to do the same with my smaller pumpkin. The lines are going to go on an outward curve on one side. And curve in the opposite direction on the other side. All right, now here's where we start with our dots. You have one, two, three, four, five sections, or I have five sections. I'm going to start right in the middle section here. Down the center of this section, I'm going to make my big dots. And again, I'm using my marker. And this is important that your, your plate is dry or else your marker is going to get all the paint stuck on it and it's not going to work as well. So I'm going to stay right down the center of this section. And it's important that you keep that in mind. I'm going down the center of the section. The center of the section. And I'm filling it with big dots. You can make them as big as you want. Okay. And I'm spacing them evenly. Hey, you know, these dots are repeating. Do you remember what it means when something repeats? If we have a shape that repeats. Hey, who said pattern? Very good. We actually are creating a pattern by repeating the dots. You guys paid attention when we were talking about patterns. Thank you. Big dots first, okay? All the way to the end. Let's see if I get some paint stuck on here. Okay. All right, so now we have our big dots. So what do you think's next? We're going to stay in the same section, but we're gonna make a little bit smaller dots. And we're just gonna follow the curve of the pumpkin. We're not going all the way to the edge. We're staying close to the center of the dots, the big dots. See, I'm not at the edge. I'm close to the center. Not making huge dots. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other end. Right up along these dots. In Kusama's mind, the more dots, the better. Try to follow the curve of the line. Okay, see how I followed the curve? And now I have one more row. I'm just going to make dots with my pen. Little tiny dots with my pen right along the curve of the section we are working in. So I have three size dots in one section. And we're going to do the same thing to every section. So take your time. Don't rush. Nobody's in a hurry. We want this to come out nice and neat because everything she did, she did nice and slow, meticulously working, nice and neat. No mess, nice and neat and controlled. All of her dots are controlled. So there's the first part of a Yoyo Kusama inspired pumpkin. All right, so let's continue right going to the next section. And now what I want to show you now with the next section, I want to go to the end over here because my pumpkin has curved and the center of my pumpkin, these bigger dots are going to appear smaller because it's further back. But they're still big dots, bigger than the other two we're going to make. You see how they're, they're big, but they're not as big as the ones right in the front. Because remember, the pumpkin's curving in this direction towards you. So they're not as big as those, but they're big. 
I'm just going to do this really fast and I'll come back and color them in but I just want to show you what we're going to do over here now this pumpkin is curving in this direction so when I make my next set of dots we might lose some of them towards the inner part of the pumpkin because when a pumpkin let me show you when a pumpkin grows it's like a curve each section is curved so if it's curved some of these dots I might not see as well because of the curve it's like hidden and that's what I'm doing now I'm, I'm drawing the dots but some are hidden by the curve see how we're doing. so this is the second set of dots which is more towards the center of the pumpkin section so now the next section I do, which is just the dots, they're right on the line if you see them at all. To show the curve, how this pumpkin has curved. Do you see what I mean here? So here's the medium sized dots. We could see them plain as day, but those little dots are right up on the line. Where here they have some distance before they hit the line. But these, because of the curve of the pumpkin, the natural curve, they're a little bit hidden from us. And even the medium dots are going to get lost too as we get up closer towards the top. They're getting closer to the edge because of the natural curve of the pumpkin. So you go work on yours and I'll work on mine and we'll meet back here in a few moments, okay? Have fun, kids. Do each section of both pumpkins. Take your time, don't rush, enjoy the process, and I'll meet you back here when we're done, okay? Well, I finished my pumpkins, how'd you do? All right, so now we move on to our next step. I've got both my pumpkins with all my dots, and I've got my beautiful lime green paper. Now we're going to place our pumpkins onto the paper. Now I'd like if maybe one overlaps the other, you could have the purple overlap the, pink, the orange or vice versa. But I think I'm gonna put the bigger one in the back and the smaller one in the front. So we have dots on top of dots and it's giving that whole illusion of going on forever and ever. So first thing I need to do is I need to glue down my plate. So what I'm going to do, make sure it's shape is good I'm going to get my glue and we really only need to put the glue on the outside edge of the paper plate because that's really the only part that's going to touch the paper underneath it. I'm sorry, I hate to put my arm in front. But I have to turn this around so I can get to the edge. So you see how I have glue all around the edge, but be careful when you put it back on. You want to make sure that your lines are straight up and down on your pumpkin okay you don't want them going this way you want them straight up and down your pumpkin lines and then we just press down and our pumpkin is it ad will adhere and dry to the paper okay i might have to twist them a little bit there we go okay now i'm going to put my purple pumpkin in and i am just going to overlap him a little bit because i like having that overlap it gives it a more realistic feel, like these are two pumpkins out in a pumpkin field. One's in front of the other, one's behind the other. Okay, right on the edge. All right, and then let's be careful again that your lines are in the right direction. And we'll push those down. Very good. Very good. Now, you could do one of two things. You could use a green marker to make your stems, or you could outline your stem with a black marker, like I'm going to do. Now, a stem is wider towards the neck and then gets thinner at the top with a little circle at the top. So I'm drawing mine, and I'm going to come back in with the green marker, and I'm just going to color it in. Oop, this marker is not working. Of course not. So I hope this one works. There we go. So now I'm just coloring it in with a darker green than the lime green color you see on the paper. 
which by the way I love this lime green I think it's beautiful there's a little glue here that I'm not going to rush and color over the glue and I'm going to do the same thing for my little pumpkin I think I'll make his stem go in that direction wider towards the bottom parallel lines shorter at the top and a little circle okay and I'm just going to fill it in with the, the marker or if you have a crayon you do that whatever you like and what I'm going to do with that open circle at the end I'm going to fill it in black why because it's just another dot in our picture of dots now the last thing we want to do is we want to take some of that shredded purple paper or orange paper whichever you have and we're just going to glue it at the bottom of our pumpkins to make it look like they're sitting in a field with a little grass or hay underneath them okay so what we'll do here is we'll just spread a little glue right across the bottom of our pumpkins right across see how I'm doing that right across and then close your glue I'm going to take my shredded paper and just place it on top of the glue take it all across place it on top of the glue until I have all the glue sections covered then I will take my hands flat and press press a little bit so it sticks to the glue sticks to the glue but not to my hands okay so give that a chance to dry and there you have it boys and girls you have a yoyoy kusama inspired pumpkin patch and this is really beautiful i love all the dots let me push this up see if i can hold it up i'm going to try to hold it up sorry that's my helping hand hello boys and girls he's such a good helper and a little pie. here we go okay i'm going to try to hold it up but everything's wet and i hope nothing falls ta-da magnificent i think that's beautiful i hope you enjoyed this project and i hope you enjoyed the little video about yo yo kusama she's such a beautiful lady she really is and she sends such a beautiful message love peace joy that's all she just wants everybody to be happy and she's even making her dots every day so that's it for today boys and girls i hope you had a good day or have a good day and guess what i'll see you next week and we'll do something different so this is miss lisa your art teacher saying ciao for now from my table of art bye bye boys and girls i miss you all very much in case you didn't know